So, what I was talking about in the previous video that the sound was removed from is that the, the Israeli army, the Israeli soldiers themselves, the tanks and, and all the, the vehicles and the weapons are in the streets. We're not talking about the war plans alone now, we're talking about the tanks, um, the, the clashes, we're talking about everything on the ground between the buildings over the heads of civilians uh, and then on the hospitals, schools and everywhere. It's a ground invasion and the media is not talking about this. The media is not covering this because there's no media there. Everything that is reaching from there, the photos, the videos, the audios, the news are from civilians themselves who, who got some signal or some connection to tell us uh, what are they witnessing. There is no one in the north. And a little bit of people are still in the north who can give us the, 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 the whole image of what is happening. And the media need to cover this more. They, they need to talk about it. I mean, I, I left the, the hospital after the hospital was bombed. I was never thinking about leaving the place there to, to uh, and not talking about what is happening inside the Shifa and around in the west of Gaza. We need to talk about this more. Last night, so last night, the hospital was bumped again. No one knew about it because there's no media to cover it. The, 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 last night, uh, the, the power, the, the electricity was cut off for, a, for an hour, whole hour. The whole hospitals, sections, departments were cut off without electricity. The incubators, the newborn children, the, the intensive care with, were without any electricity. And no one knew about it because there is no media to cover it. Because before the first bombing of the Shifa Hospital and other hospitals, by the way, Rantisi, Nasser, and the Indonesian hospital with daily bombing, we were covering everything there. But people evacuated the place, media evacuated the place after the bombing. Then they, they start doing whatever they want without any mercy. If they pretended to have some mercy or to warn some people before, now, without any media coverage, they are doing whatever they want. And you still have the opportunity to stop them. You still have the chance to, to, to call for ceasefire and to, to call for justice. They are, they are now doing whatever they want in the north and no one know this because there is no one to cover it there. We wait to have some signal to call anyone from Shafan to ask him or her what is happening. And if from Shafan to ask him or her what is happening. And if they have some signal, they could reach us after three or four hours of the bombing of whatever happened. And then after four hours when we reach internet, we, we tell you what, what is happening. The, you know everything hours after it's happening in Gaza. No one knows what, how, what is happening because there is no media to cover it and they, they are fooling us. They kicked us out of the hospitals, the schools, our, our homes and our cities and then they started destroying everything. The Hajar wal Bashar, as we are speaking in Arabic, people and buildings, people and rocks, people and everything is destroyed. This is breaking news from Gaza. It is 2.04 Palestine time, November 12th. Nine minutes ago, the head of the Euro-Mediterranean Human Rights Observatory, Rami Abdo, released a statement and it reads, the Red Cross has electric generators in its warehouses, but it is refused to deliver them to Al Shifa Hospital and other hospitals, and it refuses to strengthen its personnel and move to save people's lives. There has been endless pleas for help, especially over the last 24 hours from people in Gaza inside and outside of Al Shifa Hospital for help. I've gathered reports over the past 24 hours regarding Al Shifa Hospital via Twitter. 14 hours ago from Dr. Mustafa El Masri, a Gazan psychiatrist. He said, latest news from the people around Shifa Hospital. 15,000 people are being slaughtered inside the hospital. International Committee of the Red Cross 
anyone. Both the ICU and the NICU have been hit again. Ten hours ago, journalist Mohamed Smirya reported that the Gaza Ministry of Health said, we can't update the number of people killed in Gaza. And as I'm sure you feel overwhelmed with feelings of despair amidst this barrage of news, I want to add in this statement from the Secretary General of Hezbollah, Hassan Sayed Nasrallah. He stated, protests in the region are very important, but protests in Western countries are of more importance because people there are pressuring their governments and officials to stop Israeli aggression on Gaza. Friday late afternoon, Palestinian journalist Yunus Tarwawi reported a statement from Dr. Nedal Abhadros, head of neurosurgery at Shifa Hospital. Dear colleagues, the situation in Shifa is extremely dangerous. We as medical staff want to leave, but we cannot. We might not survive till morning. We don't want to be killed here just because we remained committed to our patients and our medical profession. I am calling for help urgently. Please do whatever you can through your government or the International Committee of the Red Cross to arrange a safe corridor for medical staff. Now remember that while many Gazans had to flee south yesterday, many still remain there for a variety of reasons and we cannot forget about them. Friday evening from Noor Gaza on Twitter spelled N-O-U-R-G-A-Z-A if you want to follow them. And they said, guys, if anyone has a voice that can reach the media, I hope he tells us that many people are lost in Gaza, in entire areas that remain. The occupation is benefiting from the narrative that civilians have been displaced to the south. That is, the massacres it will commit, neither with good media coverage nor in hospitals that save people. Shortly after, from Lama Mohammed Ghazali, translated from Arabic, we are still in our homes. The whole neighborhood is there and they are not coming out, God willing. Hello everybody, today is November 11th, 2023 at around 3.15 p.m. and here are some of the latest updates coming out of Gaza. To start off with some of the latest figures from the Palestine Ministry of Health, I'd like to report that 11,100 martyrs have been killed since October 7th, 4,506 of those are children, 27,490 humans are currently injured, 8,663 of those reported injured are children. 198 medical staff have been killed since October 7th, with 60% of hospitals no longer functioning. Additionally, 87 ambulances have been damaged, leaving now only seven functioning ambulances in the Strip, all of which are prone to running out of fuel and no longer being functioning themselves. For some updates out of yesterday, there were a minimum of six hospitals targeted and attacked by the Israeli military. Two of those were children's hospitals. And after the announcement that the Israeli military are now surrounding hospitals on foot, it was said by an Israeli military spokesperson yesterday that, quote, if we see Hamas terrorists firing from hospitals, we'll do what we need to do. If we see Hamas terrorists, we'll kill them, end quote. As of about 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it was reported that Israeli military tanks were about 65 feet away from the El Quds Hospital. This hospital is housing a minimum of 14,000 displaced Palestinians. There have been multiple reports that the military is now firing into the hospital, and it has been said by the Palestine Red Crescent that they are now in a state of, quote, extreme panic and fear, end quote. The Israeli death toll was updated yesterday from 1,400 to 1,200, and there has still yet to be confirmation as to why that has occurred. We have heard from one of the spokespersons named Liar Hayat yesterday that, quote, it is due to the fact that there were a lot of corpses that were now identified and now we think belong to the terrorists, end quote. Footage of dozens of Palestinian hostages being tortured on film reportedly for TikTok challenges have been uploaded online and are continuing to come out of the area. Israel has launched air raids at the Nusayrat refugee camp, which was supposedly a safe area. And the director of the Gaza Health Ministry has now reported that people are digging graves with their bare hands. He has said that this needs to happen, quote, otherwise epidemics will break out. These bodies have been lying on the street for days, end quote. 
there have been a ton of alarming reports coming out of the El Shifa hospital, which again is the largest medical complex in the entirety of the Strip. The director of the El Shifa hospital stating today that they are, quote, minutes away from death, end quote, and also noting that they are already losing babies hooked up to incubators. There were 39 babies that were relying on those incubators to stay alive, and a minimum of two have already been killed. The hospital is currently surrounded, and he noted that any moving person within the compound are being targeted. He's saying that there's no power, water, internet, or medical supplies. He was also noting that one medical staff who tried to reach an incubator to help the babies there were shot and killed. Drones are hovering around the area. Families and people who were trying to escape from around the hospital were targeted and killed before they could leave the area. Part of the hospital was shelled and caught on fire and there's fear that it will engulf the rest of the building. Ferocious gunfire and fighting has been reported all around the hospital. And quote, blood is everywhere on the floor. We can't even clean it, end quote. Also heartbreakingly stating, quote, we cannot move within or outside the perimeter of the hospital. We are surrounded. We can't bury our dead. We are going to create a mass grave within the hospital compound, end quote. Israel has claimed that the hospital is a cover for a Hamas command center, while the hospital has claimed that this is, quote, an utter lie, end quote. And additionally, the Israeli army is denying that they have been shooting into the hospital, even though we have footage and obvious reports that that has been happening. A spokesperson for the UN's World Food Program has stated, quote, every day that passes pushes more and more people closer to starvation, end quote. And it's important to note again that most people do not have access to clean water, food, electricity, internet, or basically anything that they need in order to survive. Jill Hoffman, who is the executive director of an Israeli-based media organization called Honest Reporting, has admitted that they had no evidence to back their claims, saying that some journalists were accomplices in the Hamas October 7th attack. White phosphorus is still being dropped all around the Strip, including near or on the El Shifa hospital, and reminder that the use of white phosphorus is in violation of international law. A summit in Riyadh is currently being held and it's addressing the leaders of the Arab League and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Many leaders from the Arab world have already made statements condemning essentially what Israel is doing to Gaza. I still don't have all of the reports out of that yet, so that's all I'm going to say on that and hopefully I'll come back to you with more on that front. The Defense for Children International Palestine group has stated, quote, to say that Israeli forces are flagrantly violating the laws of war is an understatement, end quote. Also, Access Now, a digital rights organization, has said that the cutting off of internet access in the Strip are providing, quote, cover for human rights atrocities, end quote. News from the West Bank and occupied East Jerusalem have continually gotten worse and more alarming. Again, these are areas outside of Gaza. For some figures out of the West Bank, 168 martyrs have been killed by Israeli forces, 46 of those being children. And by Israeli settlers, another eight martyrs were killed since October 7th in occupied East Jerusalem. The UN organization OCHA also reporting that 42% of all Palestinian fatalities in 2023 are due to these attacks. At least 233 settler attacks have occurred, resulting in casualties. And the agency also saying, quote, this reflects a daily average of seven incidents compared with three since the beginning of this year. Infectious diseases have soared in the Strip with reports of upper respiratory infections, diarrhea, chicken pox, skin rashes, scabies, and lice all having been reported and increasing by the thousands. There's also the threat of dozens of more diseases and bacterial infections and other health ailments affecting these people. Israeli forces have open fired in Jenin, which is in the West Bank, and have killed at least one person there. Additionally, electricity has been cut in the area, including in the refugee camp. In Neblis in the West Bank, there has also been a report of at least seven people having been killed by Israeli settlers. Additionally, olive trees are being burned and damaged, and there's an on and off curfew in the area of Hawara, with 500 stores in the main road prohibited from being open right now. And for our last horrifying report, we have an Israeli minister, Avi Dichter, calling what is happening today, quote, the Nakba of Gaza 2023, end quote. And for those of you who don't know, the Nakba, also known as the catastrophe, was the violent displacement of over 750,000 Palestinians in 1948. 
and this honestly has many legs upon which to stand, as the last couple of days we've seen footage of tens of thousands of Palestinians being evacuated from their homes, traveling on foot, carrying white flags or white cloth as a white flag, and in general just being mass exited from their original indigenous homeland. Dozens of experts and organizations have deemed this an ethnic cleansing and a genocide and have been calling to world powers to help end this all. That is the end of the updates that I have for you all today. Just a reminder, this does not at all cover all of the news coming out of the area, only that which I found most important wrote down and reported on myself. The death toll does not include those who were not buried through the hospital, nor those who were missing under the rubble or at large. Reminder that there is a link tree in my bio now updated and sorted to show you guys some resources that you can do to help those in Gaza, including boycott lists, protest finders, donation lists, you name it, it's there, education, whatever it is that you can do, please engage with that link tree and try and help out in any way that you can. The most important thing that we can do is not stop talking about this issue. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you in the next update from the river to the sea. I don't know how long I can take it to watch kids in Gaza, if not dead, getting mutilated and getting disabled. Meet Asif. Meet Malik. Asif lost his right leg while playing soccer. While trying to get the ball, he was targeted by an Israeli airstrike. Malik lost his left arm while waiting in the supermarket to use the food stamp that was donated to him to get food. They're both currently in the Al-Aqsa hospital, which got targeted multiple times by now. And I'm currently emotional because I have been watching the video to translate it in English for you guys to see it. Every time I watch one of their clips, they say a word that hits differently. This is another three-year-old who lost his right limb. He was pulled from under the rubble, but he lost his right leg. This three-year-old just learned how to walk, and suddenly, he will not be able to walk normally like any other kid for the rest of his life. His innocent, confused eyes are just unbearable to watch. These are just two examples of kids that we're, we're able to see. We have no idea how many kids like this or worse that we're not able to see. I'm gonna play the video. It's just for education purposes and to convey the message that they sent. كان هدفي اني العب كرة قدم اصير لاعب واش ذنب واش ذنب الباقيين والمرضى اش دخلنا عشان هيك يعني المفروض امريكا لقيتوا اليهود برضه يصير فيهم اللي صار فينا برضه يصير في اولادهم ما بضرب صاروخ انا انا والله ما بضرب ولا حتى شظي بمشي حجر ماسك ما ماسك انا اش دخلنا انا نط في البريه في غزه كنت تاع كره طاحت في ارض مسيره كنا نروح لصحب صحب الارض المسيره اللي هو ما لحقناش نروح وانقصفنا قصفت وزي ما انتم شايفين انقطعت وفي انا بلاتين يعني هذا لسان طلعت كابونه رحنا عشان نجيبها من سوبر ماركت على هي صارت الهوايه قدمنا وراحت ايده طلعوني برا يسافرون عشان يركبوا لي قدم صناعي طرف صناعي يا جماعه الخير ارجوكم اي حد يتبرع في طرف صناعي انا بترجع ايده بس وديش شيء بس بدي ايده ترجع 39 babies in incubators are under a dire threat. To the besiege of Israeli occupation forces, three of them died this morning because of the lack of fuel to keep the incubators running. They have to transfer these babies from the incubators because of the lack of oxygen. Incubators are needed for body temperature and for oxygen and other nutrition. Without them, premature babies would probably die. A Shifa hospital is under continuous threat by Israelis to be bombed. Watch this. Last night, Israel cut the power on the hospital so they had to run the generators. This is the testimony of Dr. Mohammed Abid, a surgeon who works for Doctors Without Borders. He said that an Israeli sniper targeted four patients inside the hospital. One of them was shot in the neck leading to quadriplegia, meaning that he can't move or feel anything from the neck down. They had patients in the ICU that died because of the ventilator shut down. 600 impatients, no food, water, internet connection or cell services and the doctors are exhausted. Doctors around the world saw the messages that are coming from these brave physicians. They're trying to push the leaders in order to help these doctors. But Israel is still continuing to put these physicians and these medical staff under threat. 
It's important to note that northern Gaza is not completely evacuated. According to witnesses, there are still thousands of Palestinians who are stuck in the north. This lady says that the house close by has 100 people. The house in front of them has 120 people. And there are still 30,000 people around the area of the Shifa hospital, which is being heavily bombed. The situation now is very bad. We don't have connection. There is no internet. Sometimes we have some reason on the call phone. We're on the fourth floor. And also there's a sniper who attack four patients inside the hospital. One of them has a gunshot directly in his neck and he has a quadriplegia. And the other one, he has a gunshot in the abdomen. Some of the people which uh, actually go outside the hospital, they want to go to the south, they bump them also. They bump the family from the Shifa hospital today in the morning. There is no electricity actually, there is no water. There is no food, so our team is exhausted. Uh, we have uh, two new uh, patients die actually because the incubator is not working because there is no electricity. Also, we have uh, adult patient in the ICU. He died because the ventilator is shut down because there is no electricity. We can see actually the smoking, uh, the smoke around the hospital. They hit everything around the hospital and they hit the hospital many times. Situation, as I said before, very, very bad. We are uh, nearly sure that we are alone now. No one hears us. But we want someone to give us the guarantee that we can evacuate the patient because we have about 600 inpatient uh, person who need a medical care and who need to evacuation. The problem is to be sure that we can evacuate the new unit patient because we have about 37 to 40 cases of the new unit, the premature baby. We have about 17 other patients in the ICU, and we have about 600 uh, admitted patients pretty operated, which need a medical care. We need help. No one hear us. Breaking news coming from Gaza, there is no humanitarian crisis. I was struck by what you said a moment ago, that there is, in your view, no humanitarian crisis in Gaza. That's your view, right? Yes. And how does that view match with the images that we are seeing coming out of the hospitals, coming out of the, the supermarkets. I mean, there is, there's no food in the supermarkets. There is a shortage uh, of medical supplies in the hospitals. I mean, put aside uh, all of what you say about Hamas, the humanitarian situation on the ground, from what we have seen, from our cameras inside, there is no question a humanitarian crisis in there. Like I've said, and I will say it again, we are in wartime, of course, of course, that there are a lot of humanitarian challenges, not only in Gaza, also in Israel. I can say that we are allowing the entrance of food basically freely. Tens of trucks loaded with food is entering Gaza every day. So no, these are not lines of Palestinians trying to get water from the United Nations tanks. These are not Palestinians using seawater to wash their clothes. These are not Palestinian kids that knocking on the wall for the pipes to drop some extra few drops of water for them to be able to use for drinking and for basic needs. No, the, these are, are just lies. These are not lines of Palestinians waiting to get a piece of bread. Long, long lines that start 4 a.m. in the morning. These are not Palestinians who are using cooking oil instead of gas because there is no fuel. These are not lines and group of Palestinian kids trying to get f their family some food from people who volunteer to make food for the people who were displaced from the northern Gaza to the south. No, no, don't believe your eyes. Don't believe your eyes. These are just like, th this is like just hallucinations. They never entertain the fact that what happened on October 7th isn't an excuse to what they are inflicting on civilians in Gaza. And there is a concept of proportionality. And that displacement of one million Palestinians and killing 10,000, half of them are kids, are war crimes. But somehow when it comes to the humanitarian situation and when we expose the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, all of a sudden the humanitarian crisis becomes equal on both sides. There are a lot of humanitarian challenges, not only in Gaza, also in Israel. As if we are blind and can see the contrast between the two. On the snapshot map, the live videos on Israel and Palestine show a bizarre contrast. In Israel, you can see people dancing, partying, or resting on the beach. But in besieged Gaza, you can watch heavy Israeli bombardments, paramedics trying to rescue victims, 
and evacuations of wounded to hospitals. You're probably wondering why they are shamelessly and straight up lying. It's very simple because they do not respect your intellect. And prior to these ongoing events, they used to spit the lies and mainstream media had one job is to convey these lies for you to be fed the lies. But now with the rise of social media and independent journalists, we can see the truth with our own eyes. And only those who are depraved of their humanity would believe them. Because there is an audience for this claim, but they have yet to adjust to it. They're still using the same old strategy, it's their word against the Palestinian words, and the main corporate media play its role, and the average person who is not informed about the situation would say, yeah, yeah, I believe them. That's why Israel's PR is not working on millennials and Gen Zs. Because we can use our phones, we can use our brains. We are not indoctrinated to believe these lies. That's why we need free media, we need independent media. The age of mainstream corporate media is almost over. If they do not respect our intellect, they are not worth our time and attention. It's as simple as that. Let them continue lying and the truth will always prevail. The Republicans just introduced a bill to expel all Palestinians who are not permanent residents from the United States. This is insane. Here is a brief list of what the bill does. And the person who introduced the bill is Donald Trump's former interior secretary. And it's not just one Republican pushing it. It already has 10 Republican co-sponsors. This is just pathetic and purely fear-mongering. This guy does not care about Palestinians, Arabs, or even Muslims. He's only doing so to fear-monger American Muslims and American Arabs to vote for Joe Biden. And I'm just gonna prove it to you using his own words. This is what the Republicans are trying to do. And for anybody who's thinking about not voting for Democrats because of what's happening in the Middle East, just remember, if Republicans take power, it'll be a lot worse. This worse. There is a reason why Malcolm X, Martin Luther King decided to promote their own rights not relying on white people. People, because they were well aware that white people will not risk their status quo and go out of their way to fight for their rights. There are many whites who are trying to solve the problem, but you never see them going under the label of liberals. That, that white person that you see calling himself a liberal is the most dangerous thing in the entire Western Hemisphere. He's the most deceitful. He's like a fox. And a fox is, almost, is always more dangerous in the forest than the wolf. You can see the wolf coming. You know what he's up but the fox will fool you. He comes at you with his mouth shaped in such a way that even though you see his teeth, you think he's smiling. But what they will do is gaslight you and convince you that your rights are just secondary. And you have to forget about them and look at the bigger picture with a straight face. Not voting for Joe Biden because of what's happening between Israel and Palestine solves nothing. Any groups who are going to be affected most by Donald Trump getting elected or immigrants getting deported, including Muslims under Donald Trump's new Muslim ban, hundreds of millions of Americans impacted by a Trump presidency and nothing's gonna change in the Middle East. It's selfish, it's ignorant, it's privileged. Whoever we install as president by not voting for Joe Biden effectively, the United States is still going to fucking fund Israel and its war against Palestine. So effectively, all you've done is just install somebody who's going to make living in America much harder for a certain group of people. This guy is just a proof that the DNC have failed. The only talking points that he has is just fear monger people from Republicans. No real or actual agenda. He's just a mouthpiece for them. So tonight at Donald Trump's rally. So at the Republican presidential. Yeah, I'm not joking. Republican president. So at the Republican presidential. Man, this is amazing. Earlier today on The View, Hillary Clinton was asked what would happen if Donald Trump is. I think Republicans are starting. Man, this is just too funny. After the Democrats won a bunch of important elections last night, a Republican. Boy, let me tell you this. Muslim Americans will not be fear mongered to vote for someone who does not care about their interests. Muslim Americans will not be held hostages for the bad policies of the DNC. It's not of their responsibility to carry what the DNC have failed to do. Muslim Americans are not dumb. Muslim Americans are one of the most educated minority in the US. Keep your fear mongering agenda to yourself. Muslim Americans are not buying it. Blood is everywhere. You were going to sit here and listen to every horrific account of what is happening at Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza right now, November 11th. After over a million Palestinians have been forcibly and violently displaced from the north, we have very few voices in that area. El Shifa, which has already been bombed multiple times, along with many other hospitals in Gaza, is now surrounded by Israeli snipers and tanks. Soon we may not have voices on the ground, except from the Israeli soldiers whose job it is to exterminate the Palestinian people. This is the moment we have been warning the world of. 
All generators are off. All power sources are out. We have 39 newborns in the incubators. Those babies are fighting against death. No one is able to move around the compound. Snipers are stationed all over the place in addition to the drones that target and kill any moving person. A few minutes ago, one of the engineering team was hit by a sniper. He was hit in the neck and was paralyzed and now he's about to die. Part of the hospital was shelled and part of the building caught fire. We fear it will engulf the whole compound. A few families tried to leave, but they were targeted. Now they are lying dead outside the hospital. We cannot get to them. We are totally stranded. We are cut off from the outside world. And above all, we are left without any medical resources. We cannot even bury the dead. Ferocious gunfire can be heard within the vicinity of the hospital. The intensive care unit received a mortar shell a few minutes ago. Blood is everywhere on the floor. We cannot even clean it. In the past, the Israeli killing machine was killing, and this was conveyed on TV screens. Now they are perpetrating the same killing, but no one is listening. No one is watching. The whole world is standing by. We are speaking with whatever is left of my phone battery. After that, we will be silent. We are creating this. Multiple hospitals are under an orchestrated attack. Where not only healthcare workers are struggling to treat patients, but thousands of civilians are seeking refuge in. Let's go through the three major expulsions of Palestinians that contribute to Israel's ethnic cleansing of the indigenous Palestinian people. Seeing as how we're witnessing one right now in Gaza with more than 1.5 million already displaced. A lot of people are calling this the second major displacement when it's actually the third. So the first one happened in 1948 where more than 750,000 were displaced. This displacement is what us Palestinians call the Nekbe, which means catastrophe in Arabic. This was the year that the British who were colonizing Palestine at the time officially created this settler colony called Israel. The land was split into three major zones, the West Bank, Gaza Strip, and Israeli territories. In order to establish the Israeli territory, they essentially had to ethnically cleanse the entire land of the natives. Israeli terrorist gangs went to the Palestinian villages one by one, massacring families, bombing houses, setting towns on fire. Some Palestinians survived, some fled their villages before the militia reached them. A lot were also told by the colonizers that you guys need to leave your villages right now for safety. And then once this fighting is done, you can come back. They began helping escort these Palestinians out of their villages and then once the Palestinians were gone these Israeli terrorists moved in and stole their homes. So over 750,000 fled either to the north in Lebanon and Syria, to the east in Jordan, or to the south in Egypt. And then some were displaced internally, moving to Gaza Strip or the West Bank. From this point on, Egypt managed Gaza Strip and the West Bank was managed by Jordan. Then 19 years later, in 1967, the second major expulsion occurred, where more than 300,000 Palestinians were displaced. This expulsion, us Palestinians call the Nexe, which means setback. People tend to know more about the Nekbe in 48, but not so much about the Nexe in 67. This was during the Six Day War where the neighboring Arab countries attacked Israel, attempting to reclaim the land back for the Palestinians. And because Israel was backed by the West, predominantly the US, Israel ended up winning and took control over the West Bank and Gaza. Obviously, it was not a peaceful invasion of the West Bank and Gaza, and hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were forced to leave their homes. By the end of it, more than 20,000 Arabs were killed by Israel and the West. So the Nekbe in 48, and then the Nexe in 67. Which brings us to present day 2023 with the genocide of Gaza, where Israel has so far displaced more than 1.5 million Palestinians in Gaza Strip. More than 70% of the population forced to leave their homes, making this the third and I believe the largest expulsion of Palestinians in history. Mind you that this is 1.5 million people displaced within Gaza within a 25 mile strip of land. They're not fleeing to lands that are safe. 
they're they're fleeing within Gaza, which is all being bombed. So they're just making circles, trying not to get killed, which is different from the two other expulsions where a lot of them were fleeing to land that was safe, like Jordan, Lebanon, or Egypt. Now, as a result of the, the expulsions that have occurred in the past, there are nearly 7 million Palestinian refugees or descendants of refugees around the globe right now, excluding the Palestinians who actually live in Palestine, 7 million of us, including me and my family. The vast majority of those 7 million Palestinians are denied the right to return to Palestine. Many of us are not able to travel there because the settler colony of Israel only gives citizenship to Jewish citizens. Also note that these were the three major expulsions. That doesn't mean that there was nothing happening between those three years. Outside of those three years, tens of thousands of Palestinians have been killed, kicked out of their homes, forcibly expelled from their land through processes like home demolitions based on anti-Palestinian laws, settlement expansions through land theft, or even Israeli settler terrorism where these innocent civilians are kicking Palestinians out of their homes, clearing out entire communities and entire villages of Palestinians. All of these events, including these three major expulsions, are all part of Israel's greater plan to ethnically cleanse Palestinians from the land. Every time an expulsion occurs, whether in small numbers or in big numbers, Israel gets that much closer to establishing an ethnostate, a country strictly for Jewish people built on the land of Palestine. So you know how I've always said that Israel plays a dirty role everywhere in the world? So I want to read this excerpt about a Israeli company called Black Cube. The disgraced Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein wanted to hire the most effective private intelligence firm that money could buy to kill any media stories about his sexual assault on countless women. In 2016, he chose Israeli company Black Cube, founded in 2010 by former Israeli intelligence officers and the former head of Mossad, Meir Dagan. The company would get you as $300,000 bonus if a major story about Weinstein did not appear in the New York Times. Former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak admitted introducing Weinstein to the Israeli firm. Nonetheless, Weinstein failed in his mission and he's now in a U.S. prison for a string of rapes. Isabel Dos Santos, once Africa's richest woman, hired Black Cube to dig up dirt on the Angolan government, which she accused of want wanting to seize her assets. In response, Angolan authorities in 2020 accused Dos Santos, daughter of Angola's former authoritarian president, of embezzling huge amounts of funds from her homeland's natural resources and fun funneling them into offshore accounts in the Middle East and Europe. The U.S. government sanctioned her in late 2021 for significant corruption, a move that barred her from entering the country. Black Cube was hired in 2015 by the Democratic Republic of Congo's then President Joseph Kabila after the corporation's director Dan Zarella a former member of an elite IDF intelligence unit met him to establish Operation Carlton. Its aim was to spy on his opponents which included any family members who criticized him in private. This is the book it literally like the index if you look at it has literally every country you can imagine um, and yeah, I just looked Democratic Republic of Congo and I found this dirt. So get this, you can download it on Versa Books for free. Um, it has stuff about literally every country, Guatemala, Romania, whatever. There are better people than me to follow for day to day and hour by hour updates regarding Gaza. But there are a few headlines um, that I needed to share. Starting off strong, we have this rabbi on Israeli Channel 7 saying if they were humans, we would have sent them humanitarian aid, but this is about animals. This is the same rabbi who back in January of this year called a member of the Knesset, the Israeli uh, government, infected. What was that? We keep hearing about how tolerant, um, you know, Israel is to the LGBTQ community haven't heard by now, there has been footage come out of uh, Israeli uh, soldiers firing on the festival um, from their Apache helicopters. And then this is also, um, <laughs> they were looting, they were looting. These two guys were looting the Nova festival after their own people had been massacred by their soldiers. The Arab Islamic summit happened, and here's a quote. Raisi hailed the Palestinian Islamist militant group Hamas for fighting against Israel and urged Islamic countries to impose oil and goods sanctions on Israel. 
There is no other way but to resist Israel. We kiss the hands of Hamas for its resistance against Israel, Reisi said in his address. <sighs> Israel is now going after the media, the mainstream media even. They are trying to characterize journalists even from the likes of, you know, their favorable Western media outlets like Reuters of colluding with Hamas. They went so far as to send uh, CNN, the New York Times, AP and Reuters the following letter. You can pause to read. But basically they're putting a target on the back of every journalist there. And we already know this because they have killed over 40 journalists. And now watch this video and I'll be right back. Hello. outright said that he's a Zionist repeatedly for the past three decades. These are the people that Biden aligns with. Whether it's immigration, health care, student loans, uh, more panic at the borders. Republicans may be the wolves, but the Democrats are the foxes. Stop running from the jaws of the wolf into the mouth of the fox. I try to be a really patient and understanding person, but the question of what about the Israeli citizens is one that is beginning to be a little bit irritating to me. Are we not seeing the same feed? That's a rhetorical question. I know we're seeing the same feed because of the minstrel videos that I keep seeing from Israeli citizens mocking the bombing of children. I know we're seeing the same feed because I see people whose transgenerational trauma is being triggered from watching their own Israeli government blowing up children and then thinking to themselves, oh God, this could happen to me. Talking about, would you hide me? We did, babe. We did. That's why we're in this mess to begin with. Remember, came off the boat from Europe and then a year later, literally kicked people out of their own homes. There's photographs because there's still people alive today who experienced the first Nakba, who are now doing the second one. What about the Israeli citizens? You know what, that's an excellent question. Why are they good with a concentration camp in their country? Why are they throwing a rave three miles outside of said concentration camp? Why are they bulldozing olive trees and water wells? Why are they joining the IOF and sexually assaulting little girls and shooting children in the street? You're right, let's start asking the important questions. What about the Israeli citizens? What are they doing? No, I'm not talking about the ones who are hip to it, which seem to be the most religious Jewish people among you. Maybe you should be taking notes. Serious question. You said it's all Arabs. You said it's all Palestinians, that they're all complicit in the actions of Hamas. Does the United States government know that you also mean the Palestinian Christians? Are we keeping that one a secret? I'm not trying to be an asshole, okay? But if we're playing the numbers game, y'all are doing exactly what you want to do. In closing, if I, right now, fly to Gaza and say, okay, I'm going to join the resistance, I will be tried for treason 
worse even. But allegedly there are people flying from America who have dual citizenship, I guess, who are now going to Israel to help the IOF kill innocent Palestinian civilians. And that's totally good with like everybody. Just asking questions. Don't mention the children. Don't name the dead children. The people must not know the names of the dead children. The names of the children must be hidden. The children must be nameless. The children must leave this world having no names. No one must know the names of the dead children. No one must say the names of the dead children. No one must even think that the children have names. People must understand that it would be dangerous to know the names of the children. The people must be protected from knowing the names of the children. The names of the children could spread like wildfire. The people would not be safe if they knew the names of the children. Don't name the dead children. Don't remember the dead children. Don't think of the dead children. Don't say dead children. My brain hurts because apparently just saying free Palestine, students are now being suspended. A 13-year-old in OC, California, Orange County, was called a terrorist by a classmate. He responded and said, free Palestine. Can you guess what student was suspended for three days? If you look at the first paragraph, this is a report from the school outlining why he was suspended. The incident that caused the suspension happened as follows. Abe said threatening remarks to a young lady in class. He said, free Palestine. Please help me understand how calling for the freedom of a group of people who have been living in an open air prison for more than seven decades is a threatening remark to someone else. How? So yeah, this is happening. To be honest, if you still don't realize who is the aggressor when it comes to what's going on in Palestine and who is the victim, I really think you're a lost cause, but I still want to show you something. A few days ago, a Zionist-run newspaper, the Jerusalem Post, released an article on how Israelis can use the stress from what is going on in Palestine to lose some weight. Because nothing screams we are the actual victim of a conflict that is going on more than using that to get rid of your muffin top. After receiving a lot of backlash, they, you know, removed the article, but obviously the internet is forever, we don't forget. The audacity is literally astounding. People in Palestine are literally starving because Israel is not letting them have any food. Civilians are starving. Kids are starving. But no, Israel uses this entire situation because, you know, the Israelis are super duper stressed to lose a few pounds. Being able to focus on your weight in a situation like this is a privilege. A privilege victims do not have. Do you think Afghans had the privilege when, you know, the Talibs attacked or the US attacked? Do you think Iraqis had the privilege when, you know, the US attacked? Do you think Vietnamese people had the privilege when the US attacked? Do you think any country Japan attacked had the privilege to, you know, go on a diet plan and use that stress to lose weight. Do you think Congolese people or Sudanese people right now have the privilege to take a step back and focus on that gluten-free bread? Do you think the Irish had the privilege when they were being actively colonized by England? Do you think the Rohingya, the Tutsis or the Yazidis have that privilege? And most of all, do you think Palestinians have the privilege to do that? You have a country that's actively telling you what role they're playing in this. And it is not the role of the victim, babe. On the one side, you have people who are my age, 21 to like 24, who have to be journalists, who are giving up their lives for the greater good to make sure people are actually seeing what is going on in Palestine. And on the other hand, you have influencers in Israel wearing cute outfits and making get ready with me, war edition videos. You don't have to look at any foreign media or foreign news outlets to understand what is going on. They will tell you themselves.
As we've heard over and over and over again, Israel is in a war with Hamas. Their goal is to completely rid Gaza of Hamas, and unfortunately, Palestinian civilians will die. But again, their goal is to rid themselves of Hamas and to bring hostages home safely. Never, ever, ever is this about conquering land. In fact, they want to push Palestinians to the south just so they can get to Hamas and the hostages. And then when they're done, of course, Palestinians can return. Yet interestingly enough, these Israeli soldiers are literally telling on themselves. This man uploaded a video of how happy he is to have conquered this beach. I'm on the beach <laughs> in Aza, in Gush Katif. I'm safe, I'm happy. Me and my friends conquered Bet Laia and El Atatra and Sulatin. And we're moving on and we're gonna conquer the rest of Gaza. I'm safe, I'm happy, I'm enjoying the big schut of my lifetime. I love you all, and I couldn't be happier to be where I am doing Avodah Kedosha. Take care and be well. Shmoru al chiyuch, shmoru al chiyuch. Mwah. Shabbat Shalom. Did you know that it's expected of the occupied people of Palestine to support and bolster the economy of the occupier? Let me show you. This is a baby product that you would find in a grocery store in Ramallah. This product, as you can tell, is labeled in Hebrew. The Palestinians of the West Bank speak, read, and write in Arabic. So if you were a mother buying this product, you would have no idea what's in this product. And if your baby had allergies, God forbid, you wouldn't be able to tell. It's also labeled for 18 shekels. In the 90s, when the Oslo Accords were signed, it was mandated that the Palestinians in the West Bank import a certain number of goods, such as this and that they come off of the Jordanian dinar, which was their form of currency at the time, and onto the Israeli shekel to booster their economy. Again, this is the example of the back of the box that I took. No Arabic, no English. Would have no idea what's in this. Here's another example. This is some sort of snack bar. It's labeled corny milk, but nothing else. Again, the back of the box. Even women's feminine hygiene products are not labeled in the indigenous language of the people, but they're expected to buy these. Another example, I have no idea what this is. I, it could be salt, could be flour, I have no idea. And lastly, I think what tugs at my heartstrings the most is the produce. When you go into a Palestinian market in the West Bank, there are two types of produce. You can buy this produce, which is imported from the occupier, or you can buy beledi produce. Beledi, beledi produce is made and produced by Palestinian farmers. However, these farmers have limited accesses, access to resources and water, and water is much more expensive for them. So growing their produce is much more expensive, and therefore they have to sell it at a higher price. Those who are financially unable to buy the more expensive Baladi produce end up defaulting to this. What that does is it further decimates the Palestinian farmer, it decimates their economy, and eventually leads them to sell off their land and isolating us further and further and further economically. And that is yet another impact of settler colonialism. It's not just physical restrictions, it's also economic restrictions that lead to the further degradation of the local indigenous society in every possible pervasive way. Hey guys, it's me again. So we're at 11,000 now. Where are the both sides people at? It's time to condemn some violence, right? You guys have been mighty quiet for the past 34 days. We miss you. You said you cared about kids. Well, the number is past 4,200 now. I'm just really personally confused, honestly, because you were acting very morally superior about this. The least I could expect is that you'd be demanding a ceasefire until your lungs gave out. For the folks who thought it was super poignant to share that they're not supporting Palestinian liberation because the people in charge are homophobic. I guess we're not aware of the multiple support groups and feminist organizations that are fighting for LGBT rights in the middle of a cleansing. And I imagine it ain't easy to do without any support, considering as one of the co-founders of Aswa put it, the Israeli queer community will fight against homophobia in Israel, but will leave their Palestinian siblings to fend for themselves. That sounds eerily similar to the struggle of black and brown queer people in America. Saying stuff like that is the exact same as not supporting black 
Black Lives Matter because America is a milk supremacist country. So yeah, I agree with Nazreen. It's probably pretty difficult to foment a civil rights movement in the middle of a war zone where nobody has any rights at all. And call me crazy here, but I think the actual best thing for the queer community in Palestine right now is to not be bombed by a settler state. But speaking of settler states, I wonder what they think about this issue. Wait, what do you mean that gay marriage isn't legal? And why is it non-binary recognized? And what's up with the donating blood legal with restrictions? There are already sound medical restrictions to donating blood. So what extra discrimination are you applying to the queer community? Now this is a weird one. Back in 2014, 41% opposed gay marriage. And in 2023, it jumped up to 56%. That shouldn't happen, unless discrimination is directly correlated with their government becoming more far right over time. So this just happened, like November 1st, 2023. The Knesset is finally recognizing same-sex partnerships of fallen soldiers. You have to literally pass away to be seen as equal. And if you see at the bottom there, this couple was supposed to be married on October 20th, but not in their home country, no. They have to go where it's legal and perform the marriage there for them to be recognized in the state they have citizenship in. What is the reason for that? This feels very performative. This is just me talking, but considering how fascist their government is becoming, if it weren't for the optics campaign targeted at Western liberals for monetary support, the queer liberation movement in Israel would be way worse off. So I'm going to touch your hand when I say this. If you care at all about children, then you would support Palestinian liberation. And if you care at all about the global queer community, then you would support Palestinian liberation. Free Palestine. Learning that the word gauze comes from Gaza like the medical the gauze that we use to wrap wounds. I'm not gonna lie, that really got me. As a disabled person, like every time I needed to heal, every time I've had surgery, every time I've had an incision that wouldn't close properly, I've quite literally been wrapped and packed and embraced by a healing culture of people that I largely have never met in my life. That got me. This is your daily Philistine reminders for the Muslims and non-Muslims, whoever you may be. Don't buy from Poo Starbucks, don't buy from Poo McDonald's, don't buy from Pooch and Horns because they all support Poo Zero. Don't buy from anywhere else that supports, okay? If you see your sister with that ice chai, respectfully, tsh, back of the head. You see your brother with that unicorn frappuccino, tsh, back of the head, two times, okay? Your story posts better not be getting less and less. This is not a trend. Keep posting about it. Anything that has to do with Palestine, Congo, Sudan, or any other Muslim country that does need our help, keep talking and reposting about it okay inshallah be praying keep making dua and once again i hope this helped don't forget that it's not just about free palestine but the palestine that's freeing us along the way